I want to thank you for being here. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we gather here today to remember the precious life of Lil. We also gather to say goodbye one last time and to celebrate the life that she enjoys here on this earth. And thank you for each precious moment and memory that we had with her. Her life has touched so many in so many different ways. We pray that your peace and your presence will be upon us during this time. And we pray this in the name of your son. Amen. Amen. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say not enough. Every single liar that tells me I will never measure. Today is not a day of mourning. It's a day of rejoicing. It's not a day of regret, but truly a day of rejoicing. Today we remember the life of Lil and reminisce over all the special moments that we had with her. As we gather here today to remember the dear 
and precious life of living. I know that many of us are dealing with mixed emotions today. But Leo's life is not over. As a matter of fact, it's just really beginning. Amen. Leo has shed the temporary for the eternal, the tarnish for the spotless, and the passing for the everlasting. Revelations 21 4 says, And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things that passed away. What a place. <laughs> No more sorrow. No more crying. Heaven is a place where the hurts and disappointments of this world no longer have their sting. Where the frustrations of life are replaced with unspeakable joys. Where the pains of this life are not permitted and the fears no longer control us no more. A place where no more pain. Heaven doesn't have any handicapped parking places. There are no pharmacies and no prescriptions to fill. Heaven doesn't have hospitals, nursing homes, or rehab centers. The days of aches and pains and worries and stress and strife for Lil have ended. At this time, I want to open it up to friends and family. If you would like to make any remarks and say anything, feel free to do so at this time. Lisa Couture, for those of you who don't know me, um, Lil came to work for the law firm that I was working at way back in time, way over 30 years ago, and uh, brought me out of a very dark place that I was in and introduced me to Ron and Danny and all these girls here and has extended and moved on, Joanne and Linda, wherever you are. Anyway, um, she really changed my life, and as you can see... We are all standing here together, and I'm very grateful to Lil. I probably miss her. And I'm very sorry. Anyone else? Well, let's see. It's going to be tough. Well, my fondest memory of Lil will be. Uh, we was kids. We did a place in uh, Rotorfield, West Virginia, called uh, Red Bar Holler. A lot of people don't know what a holler is, but we, we, that's where we was raised at. And mom went to the hospital, and we didn't know why. We was little kids. Well, she come home with this thing that we didn't want. So we went to the house and hid. It was Lil. <laughs> so we was trying to dig a hole so we could hide. And Jenny come and got us. Made us come out. Well, we didn't want no baby, you know, because that was going to take our place, you know. We, we was the babies. But as Lil grew, you know, she grew into a good, she grew into a big sister. We watched her grow up. Uh, she was Granny's baby, you know. I mean, she could have burnt the house down and nothing would have happened. She got by with everything, all right. You know, and, you know, we was always, you know, no matter what, we got caught. That, that was, that was my fondest memories. And then Lil, you know, as she got older, Lil had some problems, you know, and, I try to be there for her as much as I could, and uh, there was times I couldn't, you know. And I, and I think a lot of us are like that with our families. I think you know, death does two things: it, it either separates your family, or it makes you strong. That's what happens. And I think Will's death helped our family, and I hope it even makes it stronger. I don't know. That's up to everyone else, but you know, Lil was uh, Lil was always smiling. She would call me, you know, and we would talk and. I'm not a person that texts. I hate to text. I want to talk to you. I want to know you're alive. Anybody could be doing a text on your name. I always tell her, so I'm not texting. I'm going to call you, answer the I'll call you a hundred times. And I hear your voice. I know you're okay. And I would do that. You know, and I talk to her a lot of times. You know, people need to know I ain't talk to her. But, uh, you know, Lil was, Lil was Lil. You know, and, and I mean, I, we had a lot of good times together. I did, you know, with Lil personally. And, you know, if Lil was here today, you know, she just want everybody to be smiling. She want me to be up here all emotional. You know, but the, the, the way I leave it is, is like this. There's coming a day 
you know, when our Jesus, we're going to see, he's going to reach out his hand. He's going to take us to the promised land. And that's what happened with Lil. She got a hold of Jesus' hand, and she's in the promised land. I just want to tell a little bit about my sister. Bear with me. She was my baby sister, and she was my baby. I was the oldest daughter. I was almost eight years older than her when she came home from the hospital, and I dragged my brothers out from under the house to not want her. Um, but we learned to want her. She made sure we knew she was present. And uh, being the baby fell in a whole other category in our generation. And uh, she wore that badge really well because she was spoiled, but that was okay. But she was the crybaby, and she loved to cry about everything. <laughs> and she would tell on us. <laughs> she would tell on us. And so we wouldn't want her to go play with us up in the holler or in the creeks or up in the mountain. And so we'd tell her she couldn't go. And she was just maybe this big. And she'd start crying. So we'd have to take her or mom would hear it and we'd get in trouble. And so we'd take her. But we would always take rocks and make a, a swimming pond in the creek. So we could swim, and um, we knew Lil was going to tell and get us in trouble. We didn't do anything to really seriously get in trouble back then, but to our mom, that was trouble. <coughs> and when we got back home, sure enough, she would tell mom we would get in trouble, and she would cry some more. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved her with all my heart. I always felt like I needed to protect her. She knew where I was at. We were a hand length apart. And no matter where she was or what she was doing or how sick she was or wasn't sick, her sister was going to always pick up the pieces for her. And uh, this was a surprise to all of us. But then it wasn't. I've known in my heart that my sister was tired. I knew my sister was sick. I've known it for a long time. And I'm comforted by knowing that she has a brand new body. She's in a much better place than I am or any of us. She's whole again. She's happy. She's walking on the streets of gold in heaven. She's with my mom. Amen. And that's something she really wanted. And for that, I'm at peace. I will miss her. I will cry. I will smile and I will celebrate her, but she will always be just a hand length away from me. Anyone else? Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all would ain't bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's sure. something good to say. Huh. Last Thursday. <clears throat> I'm sitting in Bible study. Me and Sherry have Bible study on Thursday nights, and I'm sitting there. And Sherry always says, have your phone on silent. Have your phone on silent. So my phone's on silent and sitting on the table. Well, she knows the reason why I keep my phone on the table, because if my mama calls, I got to go. So I picked up my phone, and I looked, and I showed it to her, and I said, uh-oh, something's wrong. So I go to take, and Lil goes, well, did I catch you sleeping? I said, no, I'm in Bible study. Oh, oh, oh call me after you get finished then. Okay. So, um, you know, I called her to make sure there wasn't nothing wrong while I had Sherry so we can go on over there. And she's like, no, 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 I just wanted to talk. And I think she knew that night that her time was good. Because she told me, she said, so, how you feel about, I said, let me tell you something. You got two women in your life that I know, me and Sherry. And whenever he calls us, we're going. Because we can't wait no more. And she told me, she said, Beth, I'm at that point. I'm ready for him to call me, and I'm ready to go home. So I know she's home, and I, she's where she wants to be. Yep. But it just amazes me that after I hear that, four or five days later, I get that phone call. And it was just like, you got to be kidding me. I just talked to her. But, yeah, she was ready, so she's home, folks. She's 
We're crying, but we should have tears of joy, not tears of sadness. Because she's home. She'll be shouting and not happy. Yeah, she'll be shouting and not happy. Yeah. Hmm? Hey, everybody. My name is Autumn Taylor. Um, I had the luxury and the utmost pleasure of living with Will for two years. Uh, right when I was turning out into the world, I just joined the Army. Didn't want to listen to my mom and daddy. Um, Will's like, well, you can come live with me. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like a plan because Will has always treated me nothing less than a child. Um, but I just, uh, I know that she's happy, and I told you it would rain as soon as I spoke because that's her sense of humor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Will's chuckling at me at the moment. But um, as we send her off the right way in a perfect little fashion, um, just pray for the family. Thank you for coming. Um, she was truly a blessing to many, and uh, she's definitely going to be missed by me. I know that for a fact. Um, I hate that she's gone, but I know she's happy where she's at. And uh, I hope she comes to visit me in my sleep, in my dreams, and uh, continues to visit y'all as well. And again, thank y'all for coming. I love you guys very much. Will meant a lot to me. Um, this mom I never wanted. I already have one that's heavy. <laughs> hard enough on me as it is. But Will really... <laughs> taught me how it was to be a woman and to love unconditionally and to just smile and snap your fingers when you hear a good song and uh, never walk by a corner without expecting her to scare the crap out of you either. So, <laughs> we, we did it often, but um, and thanks for teaching me how to peel potatoes because the Lord knows I needed to learn. But um, I just, again, thank y'all for coming and helping us celebrate how wonderful and how amazing of a woman that Will Snow was. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? You do come right on. <coughs> I just want to thank everybody for being here today for Lil. Lil and I have been friends for 40 ish years. I'm Joanne, and um, there's so many people here to represent her and what she meant to them, and I just thank y'all for that. I'm so thankful to know that Lil had a personal relationship with God, Amen. and I know Amen. where she's at, Amen. and that gives me peace, but I miss that I'm not going to be able to hear her say, hey girl, what's up, and me calling and say, let's go to the beach for the day, but you know, she's got the best beach ever, <laughs> and I'm jealous, <laughs> but um, she meant the world to me, and I know all of you played a big part of her life, and I thank you for being there for her. She's been struggling for some time, and I know she was ready to. And um, but again, I'm so thankful that she did know our Lord and Savior, and she is with Him and her mother. And my mom passed just about a year, a little over a year ago. And Lil and her always um, they shared the same birthday, April 27th. So I know they're going to be celebrating together. And she is now with Jesus, and I'm so thankful. And thank y'all for everything. Anybody else? When I heard that she had passed, I sat down and I began to write. I had not even been asked to do the service. But I began to write this service, and they called me the next day and asked me to do it. Sir, did you want to say something? No, he's just no, I got up for to my seat. <laughs> You're a good man. So when I was thinking about Lil, I got a couple questions I want to ask you today. Have you ever been forgotten? You know, that terrible feeling? It's horrible when you feel like you've been forgotten. You feel like nobody's listening. You feel like nobody's there for you. You feel like you've been forgotten. Maybe somebody forgot your birthday. Maybe your spouse forgot your anniversary. Maybe someone forgot to call or send a card when you were sick. Maybe you just simply slipped through the cracks. But if you had the pleasure of knowing Lil as your friend, you were never forgotten. Mm -hmm. you, she remembered your birthday. She remembered your anniversary. She sent you a card or she called you when you were sick. If Lil was your friend, you may have been lonely, but you were never, ever alone. Lil loved everybody here today and everyone unconditionally. 
A little boy was impressed by the stars one time he looked up in the sky. He had many questions concerning them. He asked his dad, are the stars there all the time? Why don't you see them during the day? And his father answered and said, you can only see them at night. Darkness is always more beautiful when we look up at the stars rather than the corners of the blackness. And this is my desire for you today, that each and every one of you will become stargazers. We come together today in the shadow of a black night of grief and sorrow. There are many wonderful memories that shine out this day like the stars in the night sky. So let us fasten our minds upon them instead of the darkness, for it is our memories of her that will give us comfort and will be carried with us through our lifetime. There are many occasions that draw people together, but none affect us like the loss of a family member, or in this case, a dear sweet friend of mine. We gather today to remember the treasure times that we drew from her love and her strength her joy, and her encouragement. We weep together today in our grief, but you hear me and you hear me well. In reality, no one can preach our funeral. We preach our own funeral by the way we live our lives and the way we treat people along the way. Amen. Lil was always a part of those lives that she touched, and I promise you, you are a different person as a result of her life touching yours. Lil's life will continue to speak to those that she touched as long as they live. And I know there's not a person here today that does not miss her. Her absence is felt very deeply. We asked the question, I know some of us did, how did she die? Well, such thoughts are natural, but they proved themselves not particularly helpful. How a person died is not nearly as important as how a person lived. Amen. We ask ourselves and others, why has this happened? Yet it's obvious that nobody can give us a satisfactory answer that'll make us feel better because no one knows. When death comes, it shatters our plans and it causes us pain. Mm -hmm.
Danny called me and told me Lil was gone. I work at the church. People ask me who she was to me and how I could describe her to them, someone that they'd never met and never seen. And I was trying to think what one word could I say that would sum it all up. And it didn't take me but about 30 seconds for the word friend to just pop into my mind. One of the greatest gifts of this life is friendship. A friend is someone who gives you total freedom. Be yourself. A good friend is like a four-leaf clover, hard to find and very lucky to have. Some people arrive and make such a beautiful impact on your life that you can barely remember what life was like without them. Truly great friends are hard to find, difficult to leave, and impossible to forget. A friend is one of the best things you can be, and it's one of the best things that you can have. And good friends help you find the important things when you lose them. You know, like your smile, your hope, your courage. A friend is one who comes in when the whole world goes out. Or as the Beatles said, one of my favorite lines is, I get by with a little help from my friends. Friends are people who know you really well and like you anyway. A friend is someone who understands your past, believes in your future, and accepts you just the way you are. A good friend knows all your stories. The best friend helps you make them. You know what I'm talking about. No road is long with good company. My friends made the story of my life true friend is someone who is there for you when they'd rather be somebody else. Friends don't let friends do stupid things by themselves. <laughs> a friend will help you move, but a good friend will help you move a body and bring the shelf. <laughs> Lil was, and still is, our friend. Someone said life can only be understood backwards but must be lived forward. One of these days, God will show us the purpose. But for now, all we have to do is look up, trust God, and carry on. One of my favorite quotes, Death leaves a heartache that no one can heal, but love leaves a memory that no one can steal. Yeah. Many people will walk in and out of your life, but only true friends will leave footprints in your heart. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow may never come. All we have is today. You can shed tears that she's gone, or you can smile because she lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she'd come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that she's left us. Your heart could be empty because you can't see her, or you can be full of all the love that you shared. I always do this, and I, I always will. I always wondered if Lil could be here today and speak to us, just exactly what would she say? And I believe this is what you would say. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Maybe not exactly. Okay. She would say, it was beautiful as long as it lasted, the journey of this life. I have no regrets whatsoever except the pain that I've left behind. And those dear hearts who love and care for me are heavy with sleep and with ever more sighs. The smile in spite of a lump in your throat and the strings pulling at your heart and your soul. The strong arms that held me up when my own strength let me down. And each morsel that I was fed was full of love divine. And at every turning of my life, I came across good friends. 
friends who stood by me, even when time raced by. She would say today, farewell, farewell, my friends. I smile and I bid you goodbye. No, shed no tears, for I need them not. All I need is your smile. And if you feel sad, think of me, for that's what I'd like. For when you live in the hearts of those that you love, remember, you never die. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God of peace, as we end this time of gathering and bid our last farewell to our departed loved one, we ask for your comfort upon every friend and every family member. Be with them each and every day. Let me feel your loving and strong presence in their heart as just they adjust to the life without their loved one. We ask that your Holy Spirit be a constant companion, assuring them of your love and your care. Feel their longing and emptiness with your overwhelming love and let them rest in your faithful care, especially in the coming days and the weeks. God of comfort, let your presence be known to each one who suffers from the pain of this loss. Amen. 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 Lil, we honor your life. Your departure, we accept. Your memory, we cherish. And although there is grief today, we can say goodbye. There is gratitude for your life. We are truly grateful for the privilege of having shared life with you. But rest now at the end of your days. Rest in the hearts and the minds of all of those who loved you. And with so much love, we will leave you in peace. And with respect, we bid you a fond farewell. For as much as it pleased God Almighty to take out of this world, the soul of Lil So Dutton, for commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Lord, we thank you for giving the life of real snow for us. Today we don't mourn but celebrate all that she achieved and the legacy that she left behind. We will remain ever grateful for being blessed with her presence and the light she's shown in so many lives and hearts. We will treasure all that she stood for, cherishing all the memories we have that shall never, ever fade. One of her favorite verses was John 3.16. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world and lived mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe it in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I can't help but say this. What a friend I had in Lil and what a friend I have in Jesus. Would you please join us in singing the first and the last chorus of Amazing Grace. Oh. Thank each and every one of you for coming out celebrating the wonderful, glorious, great life of Lil. If you have enough friends that you can count on one hand, you're above all blessed. Lil was and Lil is my friend. And I will always remember what we shared. I don't know if you can see this, but this is a picture that I took at her at Lake Murray. <laughs> 
Yeah. 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 I fell in the water on the rocks taking this picture of Blitz. <laughs> but she sure didn't look good. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I'm glad I don't have to do that for you all the time to make it. <laughs> Not only did she look good, but she was good. She was, she was a dear friend, the best friend anyone could ever want and ever have. We thank you for coming. Um, make sure that you speak to each other. Remember this week, next week, next month, next year, remember who she was, who she is, and how your life has never been the same because you knew her. It's gonna be hard to leave her here, but how many of you know today that when we leave this place, we're not leaving her here. We're taking her with us in our hearts. And as long as she's in our hearts, she will always live in us. Tell people about her. Tell stories. Laugh. Don't tell all this stuff. <laughs> I, had to, I had to do good today. So we came through a lot. 